There's a couple of things that really struck me in terms of the, some of the literature over the last year or so. This came out um, about 12 months ago. A review of what it is about school that predicts university success. Now, if we were to ask our quest, ourselves a question, what school education for, we wouldn't say university, you know, university success, we wouldn't say the next step. But it's an interesting thing to look at, I think. In this review, what they did was they took 7,000 articles and looked at um, the correlations between what is it about that you leave school with that actually predicts or correlates with your grade point average at university. And they produced a diagram that looks like this, and we'll, we'll zoom in on the diagram, I know you can't read it. What Basically what it's saying is, on the right hand side, the further you are to the right, the bigger the impact of that characteristic or that outcome of your schooling, the bigger the impact on your grade point average at university. If you're on the, that line, that uh, vertical line in the middle, um, that's a zero effect, has no effect. And on the left hand side, that's a negative effect on something that you developed at school, some characteristic that you've got that has a negative effect on your performance at university. And so if we, you know, if we zoom in on a few of those, hopefully you can see on the right hand side, there are things, the things that are far out to the right are things like self-efficacy. Students thinking, if I put this effort, being able, thinking along the lines of, if I put this effort in, I'll be able to reach that, that goal that I've got. I'll be able to you know, bump up a grade. It's, it's under my control. I can do it. I can put the effort in. I, can do it. I know where to get the learning. I know how to do that. Um, that sort of thinking leads to, predicts, um, better outcomes at university. I think if we, what's interesting is if we put on top of that some of the data about, you, know, you can see at the bottom there, intelligence, that's much lower. School grades. University entry score. You know how much I hate university entry scores. <laughs> I think that, you know, I really think they're not fit for purpose the way that they work. It's interesting, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before, that the university entry scores all around the world, the UK, the States, Australia, all correlate really well with each other. And they also correlate with the drop in the ruler test. And if you get a ruler and drop it between somebody's fingers and see how many centimetres it drops before they grab it, they correlate with that. So we don't need this university entry system. All we need is all our school leavers and a ruler, and we'll be right. You know, we get the same sort of we get the same sort of distribution of scores. So, so what we're seeing is, so what we can actually what I'm getting at is, we can actually start to see what it is about schooling, what it is about our kids that predict at least university performance. As we go down and we start to see things like, uh, down the, just down the list, we start to think, see things like grade goal. And that's not about saying, I want an A. It's about saying, OK, I'm here and I'm consistently getting Cs and I'm going to push for a B. I'm gonna, I've, I've got this goal and I'm working towards the, that. Um, and effort regulation as well. And I think these are partly captured by this idea of a strategic approach to learning. I think that's fascinating that a strategic approach to learning is as influential, if not more influential, than things like your grades at school and your, um, and your IQ and intelligence. So when I'm looking at this paper, I think I'm fascinated by that, this idea of this strategic approach to learning. I'm thinking, well, what if you've not got a strategic approach to learning? You know, that's not going to help you at all. And I was expecting to see that on the zero line. But look, there's the zero line going through the, the picture there. And the surface approach to learning is actually over on the left hand side. A surface approach to learning, a just going through the motions of learning, doesn't have no effect. It has a negative effect. It pulls you back. It doesn't stop you moving forward. It pulls you back. It drives you in a backwards direction. I think that's fascinating. I think that that, that, that shift between the industrial to the post-industrial is really coming out of um, this um, this sort of evidence that that stuff about you know in science Dennis Goodwin we put the science together said we're not calling it content we're calling it understandings because we want the students to actually understand it this is an active process it's not about sitting back and soaking it up the Australian curriculum is much more about active learning that's part of the strategic intent and he's going to demand much more active teaching that surface approach to learning point, uh, you know, if you draw a line through it, the only things that are as or more um, damaging to students' outcomes at university, you might not be able to read it. At the top there is procrastination. Who knew that was going to be a bad thing? And, um, and, and then in the middle there to the left of that uh, orange line is test anxiety. 
you know, so that thing that stops you performing because you go, you know, I can do it, I can do it, and then you get the test, and, ah, and, it all, and it all falls to pieces. They're the only things that, in all of these characteristics, these 50 characteristics that they picked out, that are more damaging um, than that surface approach to learning.